While I was doing my PhD, I used to work at the Canada Centre for Remote Sensing, where I had a very nice colleague. His name is Dr. Bob Neville. In his office, he had a lazy boy chair where I would go and sit to discuss things about my thesis when I was having difficulties. It helped me so much by giving me more confidence that I was going in the, the right direction with my thesis. So I have had mentors who made the difference in my choice to pursue a career in remote sensing. Hi, I'm Stephanie Tumampos and you're listening to Down to Earth, the show where we talk to incredible geoscientists about their science, their careers, and their passions. As you may have guessed already, mentorship is today's topic. Support for Down to Earth comes from the Inspire, Develop, Empower, Advance, or IDEA Committee of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society. The IDEA Committee is devoted to empowering engineers and scientists from diverse backgrounds to follow a career in geoscience and remote sensing. One way they do this is by pairing established and emerging geoscientists through their Women Mentoring Women program. In this year-long mentorship, careers blossom and friendships are born across generations, disciplines, and geographies. To learn more and become a member, visit grss-ieee.org slash community slash idea. Since many of our previous guests mentioned the importance of mentorship or family support in helping them become the scientists they are today, we thought we'd devote our final episode to this very topic. We asked our sponsors if they might be able to connect us with a mentorship pair who have participated in their Women Mentoring Women program, and they introduced us to two very accomplished women. I used to work, as I mentioned earlier, at the Canada Centre for Remote Sensing. There, I was doing remote sensing applied to uh, environmental geology. Now I work for the defense department where I do a lot of work in optical remote sensing for monitoring sites. It involves a lot of deep learning techniques and uh, so it's very, very uh, fascinating. I love it. This is Dr. Jose Levesque. She's a defense scientist at Defense Research and Development Canada in Valcatia, Quebec, where she applies her expertise to military applications of remote sensing. I got interested in remote sensing. First, I got vegetable and forest investigation based on remote sensing. I just did in the optical band or near infrared band with the vegetation. However, when I got to UPC, I found that they used the passive microwave band. And now I began to do some research also based on air band to estimation some yield of rice crops. And this is Dr. Chen Zhan. She's an assistant professor at the China University of Geosciences in Beijing, where she currently specializes in agricultural remote sensing. Despite the fact that Chen and Jose are on opposite sides of the world, these two scientists have developed a lasting friendship as a result of their participation in the Women Mentoring Women program. I have a a good memory of uh, one time uh, in 2019 at the uh, Yokohama IGARS conference where Chen told me that she was going to take me out for dinner. She carefully looked for a Chinese restaurant, the best one in the Chinese area of Yokohama. And then the table is full of food. And then she's explaining to me each little plate and what it is and uh, what it means also to eat that. I really enjoyed that evening. Chen was so such a great host <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> yes, I remember that night I uh, introduced the, the, the bubble tea, the milk tea to Jose, but yes. I uh, <laughs> didn't know how to translate the bubble tea to English. I just say the tea with purple in it, <laughs> remember? Yes. With purple. You just asked, the, why the purple in the tea? <laughs> Yeah, it was so fun. Yeah, yeah, I remember the b- bubble tea. <laughs> I can say that I love bubble tea. It's one of my favorite drinks back in the Philippines. I almost drink it almost every day. So wow. I drink it almost every day. Yeah, that's how addicted I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I had no idea what it was before that. So it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to hear this story because... This mentorship program really built a relationship. Even though you were opposite time zones, you built a relationship. And it was 
even more than science and career mentorship, it was like a bond between you. Yes, actually, the mentorship program was supposed to last one year. And uh, we extended it. And I think now, if at any time, Chen would want to chat with me or have question, questioning things about her career or, or, or would need some uh, guidance, help, uh, advice, she can uh, call a Zoom meeting anytime. That is great. Um, okay. So lots of people say they want to be mentors, but... They often don't follow through because they're too busy or they feel like they might not have any real guidance to offer. Plus, many women in particular feel overwhelmed by how often they get asked to do things like mentoring. So you, you are an accomplished scientist, very busy. But what drove you to join into a mentorship program as a mentor? I decided to make the dive to mentorship that at the mid stage of my career, it's when I started to feel confident that I had become an expert in my field. So, coming also from a generation where women were just starting to occupy some various typically male positions, it took me a lot of strength to develop the confidence in me and in my capabilities as a scientist. Um, it was really out of the ordinary at that time to uh, be a woman scientist, at least to study, because when I started to work, there was starting to have more women already. So I think, uh, yes, it's some time, it's some, uh, time is something that most people miss. But to me, mentoring a student or a young professional is important and worth the time because it's, it is to give them the opportunity to benefit from my experience. It's giving back to the next. So that's important for, to, for me. And I, I would also draw the parallel that we do exactly that when we peer review papers. So your first paper was reviewed by someone and all your other people that follow. So I think it's fair at some point that you take the time to review other people's papers. So I think it's a similar thing that you take the time to have an impact and make other people benefit from your experience. That's what draws me to uh, the mentorship program. And what about you, Chen? What was going on in your life that made you decide to join this mentorship program? I was graduated from my PhD degree at uh, 2008. And then I became a lecturer at the China University of Geosciences, Beijing. Then after a few years, I had my daughter, and then I put most of my energy to raise her. Uh, when I just put, uh, put my energy again to my work, I found, oh, I'm just left behind of others. There are uh, more and more young professional, young people came into the university and uh, do more important job. Uh, so at that time, I just want to go further at my career. I just looked around myself that I, I want someone to guide me which way to go. I attended the IGAS and uh, became the member of IEEE GRSSS. And uh, I, I remember at the 2017 the year, and I find they just uh, have the page to uh, recruit the men Tor and Nanti, the program Women Mentor Women program. I think, oh, that's my chance. That's my opportunity. I can find a guide in the career. So I fill out the forms at the web page. Then after a few months, I get an email that uh, we have I had a perfect match. Amazing. When you both opened your mentorship match for the very first time and you saw you were paired with someone absolutely in the opposite side of the earth, what were your initial thoughts? I was very pleased to uh, uh, be paired with a Chinese woman because when I was in Ottawa, my best friend was from China and uh, she was a co-worker as well. And I've always found that we had such a similar sense of humor and despite the big cultural difference between uh, the two of us, this sense of humor made it so that it bypassed all the other difference. And um, I found this the same thing with Chen. 
it's the same thing. We laugh at the same thing. And anything that is cultural difference, I think it's great because it's there to discover and learn about. Uh, for me, I'm very happy. Finally, I got a mentor. I have my right direction in my career. But uh, at the same time, I just uh, a little bit nervous because I know that uh, we should chat and speak English because uh, before I joined this program, I didn't have many opportunities to speak English with, uh, with others. So I'm a little worried about my oral English. Actually, I just uh, rehearsed my lines before the first chat because I was afraid that I can't express myself clearly to, to the other. I think maybe the nervousness is overwhelmed at the happiness. <laughs> But when the first chat begins, all the, the worry just uh, lost. And uh, I find Jose is uh, such a humorous woman. That's so lovely to hear. For both of you, sounds like it was a perfect match. Yet, I'm also wondering, were there any barriers that you had to overcome? At the beginning, I was worried about the 12-hour time difference <laughs> between the two of us. <laughs> But it turned out to be okay because it's either morning or evening for either of us. So the other thing also is uh, the language. Uh, I mean, we often found ourselves saying, oh, I see now what you mean. <laughs> But, you know, the message is always passed through. So I think, yes, it's something that could be a little scary at the beginning. But... Now, at the, at the end, you realize that uh, it's, it's not something that should be a barrier to uh, you going into mentorship. How about you, Chen? Uh, yes, I agree with Jose that uh, for me, the first barrier is the language. Because when you just talk to a woman speaking another language, you can't express yourself clearly as your mother tongue. And uh, the second for me is I'm always afraid that I'm not a qualified student or a mentee because I'm a little afraid maybe the, the mentor is very strict with my uh, research or something. Uh, I can't meet their qualification of her or something. I'm just like this. But when I talk to Jose, I think the second worry is just gone. What about the differences in research? Was it an issue between the both of you that you have different research? No, not at all. I think it's uh, it's in the same field. So the worst case scenario is that you're learning new things from the other. Coming next, Chen and Jose shed some light on the structure of the Women Mentoring Women program, including the 50-item icebreaker survey that had them answering some pretty quirky questions. Plus, they both share their advice for geoscientists considering a mentoring program. All this right after the break. Worldwide, women remain underrepresented in the STEM workforce. That's why the IDEA Committee of the IEEE Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society has developed a highly organized and incredibly rewarding mentorship program for women. Through this year-long program, mentors support mentees in setting goals, problem-solving challenges, and celebrating successes. For mentors, it's an opportunity to share expertise with the next generation. And for mentees, it can mean the difference between staying in geoscience or leaving the field. To keep going as someone who didn't come from a science background, um, having those mentors who saw promise in me meant a lot and, and truly helped me navigate specific circumstances as they arose. Consider offering your expertise as a mentor or bringing your enthusiasm and questions as a mentee. Visit grss-ieee.org slash community slash idea to sign up. Welcome back. Today, we're speaking with Dr. Chen Zhan, Assistant Professor at the China University of Geosciences in Beijing, and Dr. Jose Levesque, Defense Scientist at Defense Research and Development Canada. Though on opposite sides of the world, These two scientists have developed a close friendship and a deep bond as a result of participating in a formal mentoring program. Now, if you're like me, the prospect of getting comfortable with a complete stranger is a bit intimidating. 
especially when language is a potential barrier to easy communication. But Jose and Chen assured me that the process is easier than we think. While this may not be true of other mentorships, it sounds like the Women Mentoring Women program really equips its participants with a great tool for mentorship pairs to get deeply acquainted with each other. That tool is a 50-question survey that mentors and mentees work through together for their first few meetings. So I'm really intrigued. Tell me about this questionnaire you got. What were some of the questions asked? Um, I'm a member uh... Who are you going to invite for dinner? Uh, or uh, have you? <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, have you cried recently or have you uh, singing along? I just remember that uh, about the singing because I like singing along all the time. So when the question just <laughs> help me sing, just say that. No, I, I need. I, I also, I, I remember a question. Have you rehearsed yourself before you talking somebody on the phone? I said, yes. Just said, so, no, I just uh, pick up the phone and just say it. Yeah. No re- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the question is a wonderful question to uh, icebreaker, I think. So we get to know each other. We know we both like swim. We both have the geology background. And uh, I told Jose, I um, attended a dance club. And I also sent some pictures how to, how to learn some Chinese traditional dance like this. And uh, Jose showed me her art. Yes, I remember those, those questions. That they were very funny sometimes. And it helped us realize that the, what we had in common like uh, this artistic background that Chen had about dancing and also she was doing the ink uh, uh, silk and that was beautiful and uh, yeah and the swimming like uh, I've always been swimming and Chen too she's a good swimmer (laughs) yeah yeah I'm a good swimmer and uh, the uh, last time I showed you the picture of the uh, Peking opera costume I wearing like uh, like this this the uh, water sleeves we call it, a very long very long sleeves when you dancing just a wave at the at the air to make the the curve in air that's that's it yeah it was beautiful yes that's really interesting that you get to know what's similar between you both on another note in what ways has this mentorship helped both of you grow um um these interactions with Chen throughout the mentorship activities, to me, they further enhance this confidence in me and my capacities to have a positive impact, but not only on people's career, but also in my field as a whole. So in that sense, I mean, throughout my career, I had to always validate my confidence. You know, Now I feel that I've accomplished something to help the career of a very bright young woman. So it's highly rewarding. That's lovely. And what about you, Chen? How have you grown? I think the most important is I'm more confident in my work. Before this program, I'm not that confident at remote sensing, but when I join this program, I attend IGAS and I just published my abstract at the conference. And also I'm preparing my papers. And uh, Jose gave me a lot of opinions about how to publish a paper. I think this is very helpful to me. Now I think I get all the conditions to further my career to be an associate professor because now I'm assistant professor. Now I'm preparing to pursue a associate professor position. Also, you know, I uh, now I'm working with Jose in IEEE GRSS community. Uh, through Jose, I knew other professionals in remote sensing at the community and also work together. Before entering this program, I feel myself 
isolated from other researchers and scientists. Now I joined the community. I get to know the people in it, and I had a mentor in the community. Now I feel I can do more work at the community to bring the benefit to others. Thank you, Chen. Jose, how does it feel like to hear Chen talk about how you changed her career and her life? Well, it it makes me feel very proud of her, and made me feel like I did the right thing to go into that mentorship because I did have this impact on someone. And you know, throughout this mentorship. We discussed all sorts of things, like she said, uh, Chen said, how to publish a paper, but also more personal things, like how to deal with difficult personality in your working environment. You know, it can be anything. And I think even if I'm the mentor, I've learned things from her experience as well. So now that you've both come through this experience, this amazing roller coaster ride, what advice or final words would you have for others who are considering to join a mentorship program? Jose, what would you say to other mentors? And Chen, what would you say to a potential mentees? I would say that uh, to a potential mentors, that uh, if it's only time that uh, stops you from going, it's not that time consuming. It's just a few meetings once in a while and it has such a big impact on someone's career that don't stop yourself from you doing from doing it. Um it it's very rewarding at the end and you create the, this these relationships with the person and I think it, Everybody at some point in their career has something that they can give back to the next. And also, as a final word about this, is that I will always be interested in Chen's career now. So it's there to stay. That's really nice that you said that to to our listeners. Thank you so much, Jose. How about you, Chen? My advice is uh, don't be afraid to ask questions to your mentors. You can learn a lot of things from them. Don't be afraid, because I know, especially some Asians, just uh, uh, they afraid to ask questions of, um, to the mentors or their professors uh, to bother them. They they just feel maybe I bother them. They just uh, uh, have no time to answer the question. But but in this program, my experience is no. Uh, you ask questions and you can get answers. That's a great help. I, I would add that uh, if language is uh, something scary for you, the language barrier, I'd say that uh, don't worry about it. I mean, Chen and I were both are both from a different language than English, and and it worked perfectly. I even can tell you that Chen's English has improved a lot since. So. You have to start somewhere. It could be a good way to start with a mentor because a mentor is there for you. So there's nothing to be scared of. If you don't understand each other near the beginning, there's always a way and it could actually be, turn out to be fun memories later. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, both of you. It's been a really great thing and a great pleasure to hear both of your stories. And we really appreciate both of you for, for being here with us. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Stephanie. Well, that's all for season one of Down to Earth. If you want to learn more about the Women Mentoring Women program that Chen and Jose discussed today, visit grss-ieee.org slash community slash idea. I want to say a big thank you to all our listeners who have supported us this season. It's been an incredible journey being able to speak to so many amazing scientists, and I really hope you've enjoyed learning from them as much as I have. Hopefully, you're also feeling inspired. Maybe one day I'll have the chance to interview you about your incredible science and amazing career. Until next time, please follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts and send our sponsors some love at IEEE Win GRSS on Facebook and Twitter and IEEE Women in GRSS on LinkedIn. This episode was produced by Nicole Bedford from Nicole Bedford Films with help from me, Stephanie Tumampos. Graphics and design by Mylene Briggs of Killam Media. 
And a special thanks to Heather McNairn, Sean Kikwaver, and Keely Roth for their support. I'm Stephanie Tumampos, and you've been listening to Down to Earth.